Hi, thanks for coming to my channel. This is Midnight Moon Tarot and I'm Diana. This reading is for the astrological sign of Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Jupiter, or anywhere in your birth chart that Pisces might appear. Also, if you're new to my channel, I'd like to take just a second and invite you to subscribe and click that little bell so that you're sure to be notified whenever I upload new content. Also, in the description box below, you'll find links to my social media, my Patreon, my PayPal, and links to some really cool things on Amazon I think you guys will like. So this reading is for the month of January 2020. Keeping in mind that all tarot readings are timeless, so whether you come across this a week, a month, right after I post it, or even a year from now, if you feel the vibration and the pull uh, to watch this video, then there most likely will be a message for you within the reading. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, start pre-shuffling just a little bit and calibrate these cards to the astrological sign of Pisces and ask our angels, guides, and ancestors for any messages that we need for the month of January. Also, if you feel like your reading does not resonate with you, that's why it's important to know the other planetary placements in your birth chart that I was mentioning earlier. If you're unfamiliar with those, you can go to astrocafe.com and put your information in. They have a little calculator there. Just input your birth day, your birth time, your birth place, <clears throat> and they will give you a list of all your planetary placements. There's also a little thing on there where you can get a compatibility reading for you and your loved one. Okay, so. Spirit, what messages do you have for Pisces for the month of January 2020? Spirit, what love messages do you have for Pisces for the month of January 2020? even one more time. Feels, feels better this time. Okay. All right, now I'm going to divide these into three stacks. One, two, three. Okay. And <clears throat> the card on the bottom of the deck is the Two of Pentacles reversed. This came up exactly the same card, uh, same place, in the last reading, the Two of Pentacles talks about someone who is so busy and has so much going on that they feel like, um, your partner may feel like you're self-involved or um, you are paying no attention to their feelings or emotions. Um, that's not always the case, especially with it being in reverse. This kind of tells me about a situation that may have recently passed. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and lay these cards out. And for those of you who are new here, I do four rows. The first row is for you, what may have recently passed and what's coming towards you. The second row is for your partner, your twin flame, your soulmate, your divine counterpart, um, karmic partner, an ex that you feel still that you still feel those soul ties with, um, maybe somebody that you just met and are starting a new relationship with. But whoever is first in your thoughts when you wake up in the morning, and the last person you think of when you go to sleep at night. The third row is about our inner fears, anxieties, our obstacles, and challenges. And the fourth row is outcome. Now I've just laid out eight cards too in each row and I'll do this a total of three times making a grand total of 24 cards. Usually by the time we get to the end of the reading the cards lay out a really um, clear story for us. So we have the tower as well as the Eight of Wands. Now the Eight of Wands talks about a lot of really fast moving energy that'll be coming into your life and making a lot of things known. The Tower talks about destruction and um, everything falling apart um, because it was never right to begin with. So you, you may have recently gone through a lot of changes, a great big upheaval. And although it looks traumatic, the tower I always view as a really good card because it's 
cuts out the crap it from continuing. It um, allows the new things to be rebuilt and start over the way it should have or to completely leave everything behind and make a brand new beginning. So this is coming up really quick if it hasn't already happened in your life at this moment. Now your partner has the Knight of Wands as well as the King of Swords. So the Knight of Wands, it's in reverse here. So this may talk about somebody who maybe no longer has that um, attraction and that um, that flame for you, that that, that desire that, that they are burning for you. And the King of Swords uh, talks about listening more to your head than your heart. So they are looking at the situation thinking, okay, well, maybe, maybe this wasn't such a great situation after all. And maybe it's best for uh, everyone involved if we just, you know, clear the air and move just move on and leave everything behind. Okay. Now your obstacles and your challenges are, they don't really look like obstacles and challenges. Both of these cards are in reverse, but I'm going to explain them up right first. Now the Ten of Cups is kind of self-explanatory looking at the picture. The Cups talk about love and family and happiness, joy, all of the things that you know we want and think of when we think about a happily ever after. And the Nine of Pentacles talks about um, beauty and art and stability and growth, uh, kind of like an empress in training, just not quite yet on that level. With these in reverse right now, you may feel as if, you know, with this tower that just fell and all these things, all this little chaos and drama that may be going on in your life at this time, you may feel like, okay, I've lost everything, I have nothing. Where is this course is going to? All right, but don't get discouraged, okay? All right, so we have in your outcome, we have the Six of Cups as well as Temperance. So this tells me that pretty soon, after all this tower has fallen and the dust is all settled and uh, the little chaos of this uh, relationship that has recently passed, um, you will be able to uh, find a little peace and it opens the door for that soulmate to come into your life. Now this may be someone that you already know. It could be a past love that you're going to reconcile with. It could be somebody that hasn't entered your life at this moment, but generally with the soulmate, this is someone that you have had a glimpse of at some point during your life. You may have crossed paths at some point. Maybe you took a class together, or maybe they worked at the same place you did, or maybe you have a circle of friends. You know, we all have different sets of friends in our life for different parts of our life. It may be someone that you're really close with know somebody who has that person in their circle but somehow always there seems to be some type of connection between you and your soulmate that's entering which is going to give you uh, a little bit of respite from all of the drama that has been going on and the person uh, that your soulmate is it's going to give you see the angel with the two cups here it's a lot like the card the two of cups there's a little bit of reciprocity going on here this give and take there's um there's a balance. It's not all one person putting everything into the relationship and the other person just manipulating or lying or taking advantage of whatever the case may have been. <clears throat> now we're back to your column. We have the double reverse and the fool. Okay. Uh, your partner, we have the moon as well as the two of wands reverse. Obstacles and challenges, we have the Three of Cups and the Four of Swords. And in your outcome, we have the Seven of Pentacles and the Page of Cups. All right, so <clears throat> yeah, this uh, tower that fell could have fallen because maybe your person was a little self-involved. Maybe they were uh, just a little bit of this devil energy, uh, really strong, you know, Capricorn influences. The, um, the devil card isn't necessarily all bad. Uh, it does have a lot of the same notes because this card represents 
represented basically by Capricorn. A lot of the traits of Capricorn are represented in this card, but there is that feeling of uh, control, of codependency, of a toxic relationship. Maybe someone has alcohol or drug problems or sex addictions, or maybe they're just a, a liar, a manipulator. Maybe they are a narcissist and they know exactly how to trigger you and make you feel like you're crazy and uh, give you those issues, which, you know, especially Pisces, you being a water sign uh, and this these being uh, pinnacles here uh, in the <clears throat> the devil card is Capricorn and pinnacles are representing earth signs so this could very well be that person and they make you feel as if your feelings are meaningless as if you uh, you you know they're, they are so totally involved with what they have going on that they're not even aware of the fact of how deeply it's actually upsetting you so you are definitely ready to move on and make this uh, take advantage of this new energy that's coming in and make a brand new start just take that leap of faith if you have an idea about uh, moving to another city or changing uh, jobs or the color of your hair or something, make that change, make that little, uh, you know, line of demarcation so that you can uh, separate from that and have this point of a new beginning for you to look forward. Now your partner has the moon as well as the two of wands here. So the twos are always about making decisions. And you see this man is holding this world here in his hand like a globe and like a crystal ball. And he's looking out between these two wands into the future, imagining of what there could be. Now he's seeing that, you know, the situation is maybe not so great. And while he's it's probably not going to include you. Now we have this lunar eclipse here and we recently um, have had this phase go on in our lunar cycle. Uh, you know, everything that's in the dark comes to light. So while you are in the phase where the moon is darkened by the Earth's shadow, it's dark and you can't really see what's going on. But remember, as that shadow moves on past and the moon is illuminated again, all things come into the light and you are able to see all of the little shadiness and, and uh, little dealings that your partner had going on. You're going to see them for what you were. So where they are manipu manipulating and trying to act like, you know, when you confront them with, with, these things that you find out after your tower falls and these things come to light, they're going to act like, oh, well, I didn't want to be with you. I don't, I'm going to just in this relationship. But that is to trigger you to come back. That's so that they can continue having control over you. Okay. So don't, you know, don't fall for that. And, you know, we will keep having the same lessons over and over and over if we keep, um, ignoring the lessons if we don't take advantage of these lessons and um, learn different behaviors because of them you'll keep having that same that same pattern happen over and over even if you change partners you that same energy is going to attract the same type people in your life uh, there was a time in my life where it seemed like I kept dating the same person but a different body <laughs> If that makes any sense, uh, even if it was years or decades or so apart, uh, it was I was attracting the same type person over and over and over till I figured out those lessons and was able to move on from there. Now the four of <clears throat> the four of swords is talking about uh, you know taking that rest after battle. These soldiers back in the ancient days would build their coffins before they would go off to war. When they would come home, they would uh, rest for a while um, mentally um, and think about all of the things that had just happened while they were in this war before they entered back into um, civilization, into civil society again. It's kind of like, uh, you know, to prevent, I guess, like what people call PTSD these days. You don't want to move directly from one relationship immediately into another. You have to take that little bit of separation so that you can um, actually 
<clears throat> let those lessons sink in and move on from there. And so the Three of Cups talks about, you know, partying and celebration and things like that. So when you do separate and you move on from this relationship and you are ready for that brand new beginning to come in, be careful that you don't drown your sorrows in partying and distracting yourself because if you're doing that, <clears throat> you're not healing, okay? There's nothing wrong with having a drink or so every now and then, but to go out <clears throat> or to get drunk every day or to use whatever it is you use, if you use anything, uh, don't distract yourself. Uh, actually, you have to feel it to heal it. So I heard that the other day and it makes so much sense. So, you know, be careful that you don't uh, partake so much while you are in this phase of um separation before moving on to your next partner it's not fair to your next partner for you to bring the baggage from this last relationship or to um, have your emotions and Pisces are very emotional people prone to emotional outbursts and um, you know crying and and you know feeling sad and having these overwhelming emotions so <clears throat> It's not fair if you were to move into a new relationship to have all these things come spilling out of you onto your new person and they don't even know what's going on and they think, you know, wow. <laughs> okay, so, outcome. Page of Cups, the Seven of Pentacles. So, <clears throat> definitely, you will find that you know, you're going to reach a point where you're working on yourself, you are planting these seeds, you are doing the work on yourself, you're healing, you're ready to uh, explore other relationships, you're ready for this new beginning. I don't think that there's going to really require, you know, once certain things come to light, yes, you'll have your feelings hurt, <clears throat> but you know what, you're going to be so glad that you're not dealing with that anymore. That um, you're, you're, you are going to be able to get this healing done and to uh, actually move on. I love this uh, Nine of Pentacles and the Seven of Pentacles, uh, which you've just gotten both of these cards. But she's sitting here, she's focused on her love. You know, you talk about the bird in the hand and she's really focused on that she has her garden that she's been working so hard on these are all of the little things in your life that are starting to come to fruition and the things that you have planned for the future where you know you're nurturing those things and you are uh, planting those seeds for your future so that when uh, you know you're gonna find that you are actually ready for that new love to come in. Uh, your birth month is coming up really soon and we have Valentine's in February and you know you're kind of in a romantic mood and you know everybody wants to have a partner around <laughs> Valentine's okay. So in the third and final row we have the Six of Wands and the Page of Pentacles. All right and the partners row we have the king of wands reversed and the ace of swords you know before i did this reading i shuffled these cards probably for like five minutes and like a little premeditated session and then you guys saw me shuffle them here five six times or so these two cards came up exactly in the same order in like the last reading as well so i think that's really kind of unusual so you know you guys must really be similar wavelengths going on here um the outcome i mean the challenges and obstacles is the three of pentacles and the page of wands and your outcome is eight of pentacles and the four of wands okay so i do see that there is a new love that's coming forth and most likely it's going to be another earth sign that will offer you quite a bit of stability. One of the worst things in the world is two water signs together. <clears throat> I know of a particular couple now, and yeah, I know that you guys know who I'm talking about, and there, it's there's so much emotion on both sides. They're both Pisces, and um, <clears throat> they, they both have like overwhelming emotions with each other, but they're actually a really good match 
but there's just so much emotion that goes on in their life. Um, <clears throat> I find that uh, the earth signs give the water signs quite a bit of stability, especially if it's like a Virgo or something. Um, <clears throat> but this person is going to present themselves to you, and you're going to find that you know, it's actually a really great match that's going to be uh, presenting itself. And it's going to be able to uh, lift you out of whatever little funk you have been in. So when your partner, in your partner's column, uh, be careful because of the sexual attraction that does exist between you and your past partner, the one you're leaving. Don't get uh, suckered and drawn back into it because you're used to that physicality or you are used to having the comfort of having a person there. Just, you know, because that's not going to do anything, but, you know, you're going to keep reopening the wounds, so to speak. <clears throat> if, um, Remembering the hurt and the things that you are finding out about your partner isn't going to stop you from continuing to go back. It's like we talked about earlier. You're going to keep repeating those same lessons and you're going to keep feeling like they are oblivious to your emotions and your needs. Okay. So... Your um, obstacles and challenges is the Page of Wands as well as the Three of Pentacles. So I do see that, you know, with this working on yourself, you can be distracted because you may have this communication coming in constantly uh, from someone who is, uh, is somewhat attracted to you and um, may or may not be this soulmate type person that is going to be presenting themselves to you very soon. Uh, so don't just, you know, <laughs> most Pisces are very beautiful people and very attractive people. So there is never a shortage of people who are going to be attracted and you're always going to get the attention of others. Just be careful <clears throat> that uh, someone doesn't uh, want you just for uh, that beauty or that, um, those type of connections there, all right? Now, uh, your final outcome, and I've been doing four cards here at the end. We have Knight of Cups. Okay, this is good. All right, these are. All right, so the first ones that we have are the Four of Wands and the Eight of Pentacles. So, of course, you know, I said this over and over. It's really cheesy, whatever. Uh, a lot of other readers do as well, but it's so obvious that you can't say really anything but that. But the four wands look like 1111, which again talks about our soulmate and um, having this this type relationship right here. Having this, here's your soulmate, here's your ten of cups, here's your happily ever after. This is waiting for you. Uh, do the work, learn your lessons move past all this um, drama and these terrible feelings that you've been having that this person that you have been with recent past that causes you to feel as if uh, you're constantly a beggar um, like <clears throat> like you're you want their attention, but when they come around, you're so upset with them because they haven't been there and vice versa. So there's a lot of constant bickering and you are left feeling like you should be so grateful that they've even bothered to come back around and you really are happy they're back around. But at the same time, you've been so hurt by the situation that you just don't want to do that. So don't let those things distract you. Make sure that you, um, do work on yourself, like the Four of Swords we were talking about earlier. You know, reflect, think back on it, think what you could have done differently, think how you could be a better partner in the future. Um, make your little list of what it is that you want and expect from a partner in the future, and don't settle for less because you're not going to be happy if those needs are not met. And when you do, then you are able to offer this cup of love uh, to your soulmate that is going to present themselves. And you couldn't have two better cards here for your outcome as far as the Four of Wands and the Ten of Cups. Once you get past this um, this relationship, 
very soon, into the month, early February, you're going to have this person present themselves in your life, and uh, it's a game changer, okay? All right. So, Pisces, that is your reading for the month of January 2020, and I know it's already mid-month, so in the next day or two, your mid-month please mid-month to the end of the month is coming up. Um, the January's reading is kind of an overall reading for the whole month. Um, so maybe you can look back at the beginning of the month and see uh, what has, um, you know, what resonates with you from the reading for the first of the month. Anyway, <laughs> you guys have a great night and um, I love you so much and I will see you guys here soon. Okay, bye-bye.